Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So good news for all of you. And that is we are finally starting with M1 videos. I know a lot of you have been asking me to make M1 videos. So here I am in the next few videos, I will be covering the topic forces. So in this topic, we will learn a lot of things. We learn what force is. We learn how do we resolve forces. We learn how do we find the resultant of a force or multiple forces. And we'll also learn something called equilibrium. Now, this topic, you will sometimes find me referring to this topic as coplanar forces. More about that later. So first, let's start by addressing the very first question. And that is, what exactly is a force? So by definition, force is basically the push or pull applied on an object, which has a certain mass, that causes it to change its velocity. So you can see that's exactly what's happening over here. If I push it or if I pull it, this is an object which has a mass, but the push and pull is making it change its velocity. And that's exactly what a force is. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind is that the unit in which force is measured is Newton, which is basically short for kg meter per second square. But more about all that stuff later. Now, let's say that I push this object towards the right and at the same time, I try and stop it or apply a certain force towards the left. Now, if this object is still moving towards the right, that means the resultant, yes, that's something we're going to study. The resultant force is towards the right, or to keep it simple, the force that is pushing it towards the right is greater than the force that is pushing it towards the left. And that's something we'll learn. We learn how to find the resultant force. Now, another question that I have for you guys is this, and see if you can answer this. While this car is here, it's not moving. So do you think there are any forces acting on it? Take your time before you answer. Now, if you said no, you're actually wrong because even though it's not moving, that doesn't mean there aren't any forces acting on it. There are actually two forces acting on it. One is the earth trying to pull it towards the center, the force of gravity. And the other force, the reason why it's not falling through the table is because the table is strong enough to hold that or counter that force. And that results in equilibrium. So the reason why it's not moving up and down is because the car, this object is in equilibrium. And that is also something that we're going to learn. We're going to learn how to determine whether an object is in equilibrium or not. So that was just a quick introduction. Now let's get into the more complex stuff and see what kind of questions we'll come across and how we're going to solve them. All right. So here we are. Now let's just go over the definition one more time. Force is the push or pull on an object with mass that causes it to change its velocity. Now, the reason why we sometimes refer to this topic as coplanar forces, you'll find out later in the question, you will have an object and on that object, you'll have multiple forces, but all those forces will be acting in the same plane. Hence, we use the term coplanar forces. And you can see when all forces are acting in the same plane, they're called coplanar forces. Okay. Now I've gone through pretty much all the questions there are, and I can safely say that the questions fall into three categories. Category one is you'll notice where you have two forces acting away from a point, and we'll be asked to find the resultant, which we can do by resolving forces. Again, something we're going to learn, or we can do by using something called a parallelogram rule. Again, something that we're going to learn. Then you have three or more forces. In these type of questions, you may be asked to find the resultant or you may be given the resultant. Again, something we're going to do. And if you are asked to find the resultant, then that's what we have to do. If you're given the resultant, then chances are that maybe one force is missing and you have to calculate that. Or perhaps an angle is missing, which you have to calculate. Then you have category three, which is pretty much the same as category two, except that you have three or more forces and you're told that they're in equilibrium. Okay, now in order to be able to solve these questions, there are three concepts that we need to learn. First concept is like I explained earlier that we need to learn how to find the resultant force. We need to learn how to resolve forces. Now earlier, when I gave you the example of the car, you noticed that the car was moving horizontally. That's because the force that was applied to it was either towards the right horizontally or towards the left horizontally. But what if, let's say, there is a force that's applied at an angle? So in that case, we need to resolve that force and break it down into X and Y components. So that's something that we're going to do. And then we will learn how to resolve forces where the objective will be to find the resultant, okay? Now, let's get on with the very first and basic concept and that is finding the resultant force. Now I've been using this term over and over again, but what exactly is it by definition? Net force or total amount of force acting on the body or object along with the 
direction of the body. So whenever you're finding out resultant, a sense of direction is very important. Now, usually what happens is that the right side and the upward sides are considered positive. So any force that's acting towards the right or any force that's acting towards uh, upwards will be considered positive. And on the other hand, any force that's acting towards the left or downwards will be considered negative. So that means once you've specified what direction it is that you've considered as positive, so your sign, the final answer with the sign will help in being able to determine the direction. So if you've specified that rightwards is to be considered positive, that means positive three means that the resultant is towards the right. And just like that, if rightwards is to be considered positive, negative two means that the resultant force is two newtons towards the left. Now, sometimes we're specific, we just write down the value and direction separately, but if you've clearly mentioned what sign represents uh, what direction, then the sign will take care of that. Again, more about that as we learn how to solve the questions. Okay, so I'll start with a very basic example. So let's say you have an object over here, and on this object, you have two forces. One is of four Newton, and the other is of 10 Newtons. And they're both acting in the same direction. And you're asked to find out the resultant. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind is that we always break the force down into horizontal and vertical components. In this case, you might, you might think that, well, we don't need to do that. And you're right, we don't need to do that because both these forces are horizontal. So there's nothing really left for us to do except that we can straight away find out the resultant. Now, resultant is always found horizontally and vertically. Now, Rx represents horizontal resultant. Why? Because X is the horizontal axis. This basically means all the forces that are acting towards the right minus, in fact, let me just write right instead of uh, making the arrow, minus all the forces acting towards the left. That is what will give you the horizontal resultant. Just like that, if you want to find out the vertical resultant, that means all the forces that are acting upwards minus all the forces that are acting downwards. And that is when you consider right and up to be positive. And that's what we're going to do in the next couple of questions. Now, if you have to find out the resultant here, we'll only have the horizontal resultant. So that would be four plus 10. Now, because there is no force acting in the opposite direction or towards the left, so that means the horizontal resultant is simply going to be 14 Newtons. Now, 14 Newtons, because it's positive, that means it's towards the right. Let's say, let's do another example where let's say that you have an object and on this object you have two forces acting. One is towards the right, let's say of two Newtons and the other is towards the left, let's say of, oopsie, of four Newtons. Now in this case, if you try and find out the horizontal resultant, you will do two plus minus four, or you can just straight away do minus four, okay, if that's what you like. So this is minus two Newtons, or you say two Newtons, and when you're asked to give the direction, you say left, okay? So let's do another example where, let's say that you have an object where you have one force that's acting towards the right, one that's acting towards the left, and let's say they're both of three Newtons, and you have a force that's acting upwards, which is two Newtons, and a force that's acting downwards, which is also, coincidentally, two Newtons. Now here we'll find out the horizontal and the vertical resultant. So in order to find out the horizontal resultant, we'll do three minus three, which means the horizontal resultant is equal to zero, and in order to find out the vertical resultant, we'll do two minus two, which means the vertical resultant is also equal to zero. Or you can say that this object is in equilibrium. Now more about that later. This is, you can, you can say that it's just a teaser, but this object is in equilibrium. So the two main concepts that we've learned through this video what force is and how to exactly do we determine the resultant. Now this is very basic, it's just barely scratching the surface, but this was just to get you 
familiar to the idea of resultant and forces. In the next couple of videos, we will dive deeper into the more complex questions and we learn how to resolve forces. And that is when things will start to get complicated. But if you learn the steps, if you follow the simple techniques that I'll teach you, inshallah, it's not going to be that difficult. So yeah, that's it. I will stop here. See you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.